Got to sprint as fast as you can. Speed's usually your friend a lot of times. Yeah. And your slide, you know, having that perfect drop is really where it's at. Yeah. So I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in Tori Alba, I'm a professional skimboarder, and you're watching Behind the Brand with Brian Elliott. Hey, I'm Brian Elliott, welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today we're here in beautiful Laguna Beach with professional skimboarder Amber Tori Alba. Amber, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, no worries, it's awesome to be here. I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? Yeah, it's kind of came up out of nowhere, you know, it's a passion that I followed and it happened to turn into something that I'd be able to live off of and that's the greatest part about it. So, tell me about skimboarding. I mean, it's, it's something I used to do. We sort of talked off camera a little bit. Like when I was a teenager, I got a piece of plywood, jigsaw, yeah. s some like lacquer or like resin or something. I can't even remember what we did it with. <laughs> uh, sanded that thing down to butter and took it out to like 32nd Street at Newport. Yep. And those were my teenage years surfing and, and skimboarding. But the sports changed a lot. Oh, yeah. Skimboarding's evolved so much, and it's cool to see, like, where it's come from. I grew up on the East Coast, so I didn't even know that you could ride waves until I was a lot older. And uh, when I started pursuing my career in skimboarding more seriously when I was, like, 21, um, that's when I started to learn that you could ride on waves and you can do tricks and almost apply, like, skateboarding and surfing tricks right on a wave with a skimboard right there on the shore. So that's the coolest part about it. It mixes so many different types of styles and so many different types of other action sports that you can incorporate those skills into skimboarding. Growing up, I followed a lot of like the, the guys that were really evolving into the street era, like even like Paul Rodriguez and like, say, um, yeah, all those guys even, you know, sponsored by Olmos and Plan B and all that stuff. You know, I really grew up in the skate industry as far as what I watched and what I was following and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was cool to transition into skimboarding and finding my sport that way, um, kind of applying those skills and the knowledge of just what you do and the determination to really become what you want to become in the sport. What was the path? I mean, you know, again, kind of going back in time a little bit, like what was the path to become a professional skateboarder just like becoming as good as you can be, entering contests. I mean, did you do all that? Did you go the contest route? Well, to be honest, back in the day, skateboarding wasn't really big for females, and there really weren't any contests you can just enter as a female and compete against other females, so it was kind of discouraging, and that's really what kind of fueled my fire when I got back into skateboarding after kind of transitioning into team sports and doing basketball and all that stuff once I got caught up with um, middle school and high school, and you kind of detract from those other side passions where you just want to ride a board and you want to just be free and express yourself so um, getting back into skateboarding after I didn't really pursue the competitive side of it um, when I was older it helped me kind of find surfing and skimboarding again when I was able to just have more free time outside of college and things like that and that's really um, when I started to realize that you kind of have to make your own path as a female in action sports to really make a living off of it and there isn't really no direct path to see um, it just wasn't there in my mind and I kind of had to create that myself and that's awesome. Um, so it sounds like you had several different passions. You know, we talked a little off camera about yeah. how you used to ride horses. Yeah, um, everything. You know, you're into skateboarding, and so you may be thinking about becoming a veterinarian. You played basketball yeah. in college, right? I was uh, going to play basketball in college, and that's when I realized, like, a lot of the injuries and the path that it was going to lead me down as far as, you know, what you had to do and practice every day and this and that. And I really wanted to be more free and more uh, expressive with what I did as far as sports go. So you're a baller. <laughs> I, can, I can definitely play basketball. I was a point guard, so I, I get a little fire in me when I pick up a ball. <laughs> Um, and I guess the reason I want to ask that question about, you know, a lot of people who watch the show, especially younger people, but, you know, it's not age specific. It's like right. we're really trying to find out what, what we really enjoy doing, exactly. what's our passion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard a lot of people give advice like how you find it, but what's your take on it? How do you find out, how do you like gel or crystallize what you really want to go do and then find that path? Really what I started to pay attention to is where I was like, where was my pool in every instance of my life. So whether I was going through something hard in my life or I was really excited about something in my life, I was always 
finding myself like drawn to the beach and I was always wanting to do a sport so it was great to kind of involve um, a sport and the beach at the same time while I could surf and do all that stuff I kind of felt like um, growing up I you know I didn't live in the greatest neighborhood I had my surfboard stolen from me when I was trying to focus on becoming a surfer at one point so um, skimboarding was just something I was just happened to pick up and just have fun with and realize that you can make something out of it so yeah just going back to that I just really had to find my way and just know that, like okay this is something that I want to pursue and I just can't stop doing it and I don't know why you know no matter what happens I have my skimboard and it made me happy so was there like a single moment that you can think of like that was a turning point I mean Again, we talked off camera where you were riding your horse, you got thrown off your horse, and you're like, yeah. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, can you think of like a turning point? Because um, I know a lot of people struggle with that. It's like, oh, yeah. maybe they're stuck in a job they hate, and they're like, oh, maybe just one more year, and then like eight years goes by, and then, yeah. and then maybe they're making money, but they're not loving what they're doing. Exactly. You know, it's sort of a nowhere job. So how, what advice can you give to younger people, too, like how to really take the leap? Yeah, I mean, once you, uh, you know, find that passion and you're really like stuck on it, the biggest thing for me was to take it day by day and to never stop progressing. Just always focus on a new thing that you want to get better at every day. And as long as I saw that I was progressing and building myself and my character in general, that was what kept me going. I may have not been getting that great on a skimboard my first year, my first two years of really focusing on it and trying to become pro but I did take baby steps every way throughout that. And I also found videography and photography through that because I was working with like-minded people and people were wanting to shoot me like photo and video and we were just having fun with the GoPro with my friends. And by doing that, I also realized that shooting video and having fun with another passion that I had of like creating videos and stuff like that, it actually taught me how to get better at skimboarding because I was watching the clips that I was doing and I was kind of progressing that way. So helping, you know, see where your progression is and kind of taking note and giving yourself, you know, the benefit of the doubt that, yeah, each, some days you're going to really fall and you're not going to make it back up and you're going to hurt yourself and maybe be out for a couple months. But the next time you get back, you've learned from that. And that's the, be the biggest thing that I've known in skimboarding is everything I do and every wave I take, I still learn and take something from that. And you can kind of build your foundation and go from there. That's really good advice, I think, that translates across any anything you know like right. what I hear you saying is like you took something that was sort of massive like becoming pro right. and like you broke it down into little tiny pieces exactly. and just tried to do a little bit at a time right. and focus on like a PR or your personal record exactly. right mm -hmm. um, that's really smart advice yeah. that was the best thing for me for sure definitely I uh, wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't take it day by day and really just try and every time I was down on myself, I had to wake up the next day and find another reason to be motivated or inspire myself somehow. And uh, to be honest, years ago, like when I first wanted to become a pro skimboarder, I never thought that I would have the sponsors and the support that I had do today. I just didn't think it was possible. I didn't think that they would care anything about skimboarding. Why not? Um, I just didn't feel like the sport was big enough and it was seen and like since I didn't see it till a certain day um, You know when I was older I was like, oh, well, you know How is anybody else gonna see me and you get all these things wrapped up in your mind? But what I realize is looking back, you know now five years ago or whatnot You know all those baby steps that I took they are they've led me to where I am today And if I didn't take those steps, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So it also sounds like your advice is to go all in yeah, I mean, if you if you feel it, I make strategic and smart moves that like are good for your soul, but are also good for you know your passion and your your lifestyle. You know, if you're making positive, whether it's you know you went out there and you practiced trying to be a professional um, athlete in anywhere, shape or form. Um, if you practiced for three years and worked your butt off, you know that's three years of health that you created for yourself, and you know you weren't sitting on your couch. And that's another way that I look at it too is, you know, I'm keeping my body in shape. I'm keeping my mind, you know, sharp all the time by, you know, staying active and really being involved with the community. And I'm, every time I skim with some groms, which we, you know, we call like the little kids and, um, you know, seeing the smile on their faces, if, they had, if I didn't go out on that session and skim with them, that's making a difference. And at the end of the day, that's really what I look at. Yeah, that's really smart. I think it's unique too. So you're a professional athlete, but you're also an artist. You've got an eye for, you know, photography and for video. And then you also have a very obviously smart business mind. You're strategic. Um, and I think personally, like that's the future. Definitely. You know, like 
the days of the gatekeepers, you had a manager and then, right. you know, a whole posse takes care of it. It's like, I mean, that's fine for if you're Drake, you know? Yeah. Um, exactly. That's fine. But like, I think what, com what it comes down to is when you're personal, when you can engage with your audience, that's right. where it's really at. That's where you can really get some good stuff done. So, I'm gonna get a lesson from a pro. Let's do it. What, what do I need to know about skimboarding? It's uh, not the easiest sport in the world, but it definitely takes some commitment and some patience. I think you're gonna do this fine. It doesn't look easy at all. I mean, even though the waves are not huge today, it's still like, you gotta run fast, you gotta stay on your board. There's like five different steps, it seems <laughs> like, you know, run, oh, yeah. drop. Maybe you can walk me through that. Yeah, it's the run, drop, slide. I mean, uh, it's gonna take a couple times sometimes for people to get the hang of it, but once you get that slide down, it feels like no other sport, it's awesome. What do most people overlook when they're learning how to do this? Like, what do they take for granted? Uh, I think the having the board facing the way that they're facing. Um, a lot of people will run and jump on it, and the board, the nose of the board's facing like left or right, and they're going straight, and then that's when they're just gonna slip off. So okay. keep your momentum with the way that the board is going, and I think that's one of the tips that I'd say is you gotta keep noted on the vest. Okay, good tip, good tip. So I'm, you're goofy foot, I'm regular foot. Yep. Is there a certain way or should I be looking at the wave which way it's breaking? So most people will prefer like comfortably doing a backside turn because when you're turning you can see the whole way versus yeah. front side. So good thing is I can teach you how to get on your board regular style since I can kind of drop regular and then um, I can show you which way is going to be the easiest for you to go. Probably okay. right. Uh, so what kind of boards are we using? We're using Victoria skin boards. These boards here are both like some of the top rated boards. Um, I have the custom made poly and uh, they're great, they flow well, they have a lot of speed and it's gonna help you uh, get on the board fast. Okay. How do I know what the right size for me is? Um, most of the time, it's a lot of preference. Okay. Um, you wanna have a big enough board to flow to, but you wanna have an also small enough board to help yourself get uh, maneuver around the wave okay. and feel comfortable. So there's usually like an in-between sweet spot that everybody finds once they start riding. Okay. So I ride a medium, and um, this fits for my size, but I've also ridden a bigger board. So it kind of just depends on what you're trying And what is this, is it medium? This is a medium large. Okay. So this right here is, I've seen uh, people taller than you ride it, and then I've seen people smaller than you ride it. So okay. it's really uh, gonna be a good in-between for you to practice on. Right on. And then, do we need wax or anything, like a normal surf yep. board? Yep, got some wax on in here, okay. and uh, we're gonna walk our boards into the water, dip them so the wax isn't too hot, and then we're gonna put some fresh stuff on there. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's go. And just give it a good... Got it here? Yep. So what you want to do, you can practice on this little area, is you want to practice like taking the walk with a couple steps, dropping like this, and then your next step is going to be on your board here. So you're going to want to step onto your board when you drop it like this. Okay. So... That's funny because I was intuitively I was thinking I should hop on it. Yeah. Kind of like a surfboard. Yeah. But no, I should... So the physics of it is you'll keep your slide and momentum a lot cleaner if you just walk onto the board or run onto the board. Okay. So it's all like one motion. Uh.